His name's Phil. And his name is Tim. And this is the Tim and Phil Talk About <laughs> Games podcast. Oh a podcast where Tim and myself get together and talk about games we've recently played and discuss topics in the world of gaming. This week we are grabbing a beer, dusting off our controllers, and getting into some serious local co-op gaming. We will be having a look at Towerfall Ascension, uh, Nidhogg, and Hammerwatch, and wondering where the lost art of couch play has gone. Yes, cool. All right, uh, it is Tim and Phil talking about games yet, yet again, once more, uh, with feeling. Uh, this is a pretty damn special episode because we actually are in the same room Woo! as each other, uh, recording in my study, which is nice. Tim's come over from Sydney for a quick visit to Perth. Uh, so we thought we'd take the opportunity to cover a topic that is very very dear to both yeah. of our hearts. I think. And difficult to do. Yeah, difficult to do. Because local yeah. co-op requires you to be locally... Local. Spatial <laughs> something. Exactly. Um, and it is somewhat of a lost art. It's, it's somewhat of something that has disappeared over the years as mm. multiplayer online... Uh, online multiplayer has uh, has grown uh, and has made it easier for people that are still you know that are in the same state, even people that are in the same state, yeah. to just play over the internet. And it's not so. like as people don't necessarily want it either, because I mean we still have a lot of local co-op games in things yeah. like, for example, I mean the Halo games still have uh, local, not necessarily co-op, but local multiplayer gaming. Yep. Um, the Super Smash Brothers oh, yeah. is obviously the you Huge. know the the big sort of stand out in the field. Not only um, that, a lot of a lot of indie games, a lot of like kind of you call them kind of fluffy games, but they're good games like Castle Crashes and all that kind of stuff. But like, the point is do... that the fact that we have to leave it to the indie studios to do something yeah. like that sort of says to me that it's something that the AAA industry just doesn't like doesn't really, really care do. about. Doesn't really do that's for sure. Um, so anyway, so we were going to go through a few of the games which. Uh, uh, not necessarily games that we've played and enjoyed yet. This is kind of going to be a... So this is a very, <laughs> very live... Very experimental. Very live. It's liver than live. Liver than usual. Uh, so neither of us have played Towerfall Ascension yet. Uh, both of us have played Nidhogg a little bit, um, but not against each other and not uh, locally. Uh, and finally, we're going to be talking about Hammerwatch. I have played is... Nidhogg locally. Oh, you yeah. have? Yeah, very briefly against people who didn't really enjoy it. Oh, okay. But right. <laughs> it did happen. Okay. Um, and finally, we're going to be talking about Hammerwatch, which has also got some local co-op in it, um, which I've played a little bit of, but Tim hasn't really played any of. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a grab bag. Uh, probably not, you know, as structured as... A <laughs> if, if they even are, but not as structured as, as we usually are. But... The lack of professionalism that you uh, come to expect... <laughs> Jim and Phil will not be there. Yeah, yeah, it'll uh, it'll be good. Anyway, so we should load up Towerfall. Um, so Towerfall's kind of like uh, it's kind of like an indie Smash Brothers, but kind of a little bit simpler, and obviously without the IP that Nintendo has uh, behind it. Um, it's pretty much just an arena. It's like the the, the perfect arena battle game. Um, so we'll just choose our dudes here relatively simple controls you literally are just a, a person who's in an arena fighting each other uh, with arrows uh, the the controls are ridiculously simple it's just move and aim with the analog, the analog stick jump shoot and dodge and catch i don't even know what that means but we'll find out we'll it this. means to dodge and catch yeah and you have to go and get your arrows as well which is really oh, interesting that's um ah! no yeah. Uh, and it's also kind of got... Oh, that's... Mm, yeah. You don't like that? Oh, no. Oh, that's what you mean. Oh, that's really interesting. Yes, yeah, so you have to have to pick them up again once you've used them. Yeah. Ow. Oh, there's just my hat. Oh, hey, insta instant replay. Instant replay. replay. Oh, did I jump on your head? I did. I jumped on your head. That's yeah. too cool. <laughs> oh, oh, and it just restarts. Oh, that is cool. I like that. It's very quick. It's very quick. My God. Whoa. Whoa. Ah. Uh. <laughs> ah! <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, obviously the, the spirit of local multiplayer is the fact that you are kind of doing this kind of stuff where you're eh, chumming in each other's place, having a brew, it's all good. Uh, I don't know what those treasure chests do. do I know. I'm going to grab one. Ooh. Extra arrows. Oh, bubble. Oh, hell yeah. Everyone wants a bubble. Oh, yeah. Ooh. What does a bubble do? I presume. Ah! Oh, what a shot! Why do you have burning arrows? I don't. Oh no, they went. Ah, oh, they, they went through, through the. Ah, oh, snap. Ah, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Can you imagine this with four players? Ah, uh, see, this is the, the one of the things though. Like, I, 
I enjoy games like Super Smash Brothers to an extent. Oh, I want that. No. Oh, oh. Why can't I jump high enough to? Is it like you a can wall jumping? Jump, oh, okay. there you go. Ooh, oh god. That's slow motion. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. No. Oh, I was trying <laughs> to grab you. I was trying to grab your arrow. I like the instant. Oh, okay, so you can skip the instant replay if you want to. And then you can save the replay. That's pretty cool. That's cool. So you can see it again. That's all right. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I was saying, I, I enjoy it, but it's not a game that I seek out. Oh, so close. <laughs> can I get your arrows? Is yeah. that a thing? Yeah, you can. Oh, I can too. Uh, why not? Oh, oh, Jesus God. Oh, God! You can get hit by your own arrows too, apparently. <laughs> um... <laughs> this is like, this feels like Orb India, but 2D. Jesus. Ah! Oh! Um, yeah, so I mean, what, so you don't, no? You don't yeah, know. I know, it's like, yeah, I said, it's a, a game that I've never, I've never sought out. I actually pinned you to the wall there. Yes, you did pin me to the wall there, thank you. Do you want to save like... that? Do you want to try? <laughs> Exporting animated GIF! Oh, it's even better! How cool is that? So you can give it up to all your friends. Oh, that's awesome. I quite like that. Hmm. That's pretty cool. That is really cool. Yeah, no, there's something about the frantic sort of... Yeah. Oh, see, now I'm wearing a crown because I won that last one. I was wondering oh. where the crown came from. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, they Ooh. hit each other. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I'm now out of arrows. <sighs> Fuck. Oh, God. Never mind. Oh, I, can you come out the top again? Oh, that's useful. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna use that to your advantage. Oh, God. Oh, uh, what's happening? I would say that the walls are moving. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <coughs> <coughs> the thing is, though, that with the frantiness, like, if you're, if you're citing Smash Brothers, Smash Brothers is one of the most complicated, ridiculous games in the world. Like, That's, people do it I lose these, like, it, though. I lose so badly, and that it makes me sad. Well, yeah, okay, but, like, it's not... Whoa, whoa, hey, 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 what's this about? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, my God, you're maxing out the... Uh, the thing about Smash Brothers, though, is that is the two, fact that two arrows. Yeah, I, I saw that. Bebe, double shot. <laughs> um, double shot the head. It is kind of a like all those games, like Street Fighter and all that kind of stuff. Are, oh, hey. Ooh, I have wings. Yeah, that wings. is so fucking nuts. <laughs> um, oh, it is kind of a. Um, it, it's very much that thing of people are able to. It's like an esport, basically. Like they they've taken it to the extreme. Yeah, but see, Phil, I wasn't good at sports either. <laughs> <laughs> so. I can kind of understand that. There's something. Oh, uh, no! Ooh. Oh! Um, yeah, I don't know. It, 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 even, even stuff like this, where you're really very frantically trying to. Oh, you won. Well, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Frantically trying to do stuff. Oh, hey, it gives you awards and stuff. Oh, that's cool. Mo Koala Mo awards. I love it. <laughs> so appropriate. That's cool. I quite like that. <laughs> three minus three yeah. equals four. <laughs> Worst accounting. Because obviously tried to, I've tried to shoot so many shoot. times when yeah, I have yeah, no yeah. arrows. Like, why is it not shooting? <laughs> um, so what other modes have we got? Head See, hunting. this one I don't mind so much because... Um, it seems pretty... It's very simple. Like, it's very, very, very... It's like, it's the original Mario... Oh, you can, versus... you can do rules as well. Oh, wow. A lot of words. A lot, yeah. a lot of, a lot of rules. Yeah. Um, cool. Like, the original Mario with, like, the, you know, the one map and the power box in the middle. Yeah, and little yeah. Koopa Troopers that come out either side. Like, oh, it's... yeah. I mean, that kind of... That is kind of what this reminds me of. <sighs> Fire out, you are a lucky mother. You suck so hard. Hate you. <laughs> I've already started skipping them. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't take long. No. Whereas right. I find Super Smash Bros. just to be so frenetic that it's like bomb arrows. Oh god, this isn't gonna be fun. Oh god. Hey Phil, just stand there for a bit. <laughs> oh, no. Um yeah, I mean, this this seems really quite it, it looks like something that you could easily get people to pick up and play. Like, yeah. within a few seconds, which we have just done. We've, we've literally neither of us have played this game before. And we're already but having... I feel like even if one of us had, it wouldn't be so much of an issue. No. Of course not. 
<laughs> yes, yes, we both have to stop <laughs> yes, no. talking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're only getting <laughs> really, com- really getting competitive. Right? <laughs> We're both so well. It's not a, a hive of disease down here at all. Yeah, absolutely. And it changes the arena every single time, which is kind of cool. It does. Did we notice that? I had noticed that. Oh, God. <laughs> What did you do? What happened? Well, luckily we have the instant replay. Instant replay. <laughs> this is me jumping, <laughs> <laughs> jumping into my bomb arrow. Oh, cool. So if I kill myself, I lose a, a interesting. Head hunter, head thing. Um, whereas with things like Smash Brothers, for example... <laughs> you just bomb arrow yourself. No, it was a bomb in the thing. Oh, hey. I tried to collect it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Don't collect bombs, Don't kids. collect bombs. Yeah, don't do that. Um, if you've... Coming into Smash, I mean anyone who's ever played Smash Brothers against someone who is or has who owns the game when you do not knows exactly what I'm talking about. You come into the game and you're like, yeah, this is gonna be fun, and the next thing you know, you've got some like crazy Pikachu bullshit coming out the. <laughs> yeah, is that a homing? No, I just saw you coming. No, 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 wait. You fired straight across at him. Oh, I did. Yeah, homing's pretty cool. Dang. Um, yeah. you just get absolutely shat on by the person who knows the secret combo or like the... I had the same problem with Mortal Kombat, like to be honest. Like I was yeah. never really good at Mortal Kombat either for the exact same reason. <laughs> not even talking now. because <laughs> I hate you. Oh, through the explosion. That was cool. Whereas this, it's like there is so little happening yeah. sort of thing at any given time that you don't yeah. really have to worry about pressing down a alt yeah you know and then spit three times over your shoulder that looks kind of phallic <laughs> i have to say what the arrows, <laughs> the arrows yeah just that oh <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is really fun. I quite like it. Yeah. Um, so obviously it can be played up to uh, up to four players, uh, which I can't even think how ridiculously oh. frenetic that would be. And the other um, thing was that there is a um. Hey, guess who doesn't have arrows? You like me? Oh. <laughs> uh, you can also play the story mode. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's a, a small story mode in there as yeah, well. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Uh, do you wanna quickly go? Yeah. This is going backwards and forwards. It could go for quite some time. It could. Yeah. So if we go back to quest, oh hey, we can play cooperative quest. That yeah. is cool. I'm gonna get a soldier. All right. Normal. Didn't give you a yeah. chance to check. Yeah, we'll too or bad. choose what. Too bad. Too bad. Oh, dodge. We keep forgetting about dodge. Maybe we should use dodge. Sure. All right. So this is wave one. All right. What, what happens? Oh god. I oh, think nice we should one. do that. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Oh, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Stop grabbing my arrows. Oh, yeah, because you need them. Okay, so it's got a so bit this of a twist. Is oh, God. Cool. Almost a tower defense. Kind of, yeah. It's uh, like tower defense, but uh, kind of. Feel to it. Well. Oh, God. I'm really bad at moving in this. I imagine that you would get really quite good at like the actual moving around it. I was close. Yeah. But see, like this kind of thing I've also really missed in games, where the ability to just sort of, you know, hang out with a friend. Not necessarily locally. Alright, so you can still hurt me. I can still hurt you. Apparently. Oh, and so can they. Can you get hit by your own? Oh god, this oh. actually gets really Freaking hardcore hell. really, really quickly. <laughs> Um... Oh, hey, you can hit multiple things with, uh, with the same arrow. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Oh, okay, yeah. Alright, that's fair. Um... Yeah, it's it's that thing of, like, not necessarily... Um... I don't know, it's, it's hard to figure out nostalgia from genuine yeah, enjoyment of the game. Yeah, and nostalgia's definitely gonna be a deal... Uh, because nostalgia is, I mean, it's a powerful drive. It's a its a market force all on its own. Yeah. I mean, nostalgia is what some companies rely on. Basically, yeah. Um, looking at you, Nintendo. <laughs> uh, but then, like, there were also... Oh, crap, that guy had arrows himself. Oh, is that a dude? Yeah. Hey, wait a minute, hold on. 
<laughs> so, like, for example, I had a huge amount of fun with our mutual friend Pat playing uh, the co-op missions in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. Not exactly a game someone would look to for a really good co-op experience. Yeah. Normally. Uh, maybe people do, I don't know. But I would, you know, at the time never would have uh, assumed that from the game. But it was an amazing amount of fun being able to sit yeah. in the same room. I mean, we had on separate PCs, obviously. You yeah, can't yeah, run yeah. that locally co-op. No. But certainly able to land it up together and to be able to play uh, cooperatively like that. I mean, we we sunk you know, tens of hours just oh, yeah, into the yeah. cult by itself. Like, it was a huge amount of fun. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, it was definitely something that I feel like is kind of missing in a lot of games. This is very sort of frenetic and simple and slow paced. Uh, sorry, quick, quickly paced. But yeah. the um, the Call of Duty one was actually really sort of methodical and slow and, like, you had to sort of plan your shots. Like, some of them, you had to be stealthy snipers and get from A yeah, to yeah. B sort of things. So you had to be very, very careful about lots of communication. Yeah, for sure. But, um... Even, like, both of them have a really interesting sort of place in the co-op sphere, mm. I guess. If we're going to talk more broadly about co-op rather than the local side of Not things. Not necessarily the local side of things, yeah. I mean, that's... And, and that's the thing is that, like, this... This, to me, like, even even just this first game, and I imagine the next, you know, the two other games I'm going to review are going to be relatively simple, is it evokes that feeling of, you know, having people around you know, drinking a couple of beers, like, it, it is a very, the, the, the gameplay mechanics are solid, and yeah. it's simple, it's, it's the kind of, like, all of the games that you really enjoy as local co-op are usually the games that you can teach to someone in less than five minutes. Hopefully. Hopefully. If they've played a game. If, if they've never played a game before, might be a little bit more difficult. Then again, if someone's coming over to your house to play a local multiplayer game, like, probably they have. Um... Whereas some of the some of the stuff and, and it requires almost no initiation of like it almost it requires almost no time spent in that game in order to become yeah like it's to start enjoying it kind of thing yeah definitely whereas a lot of online games nowadays it's like there seems to be almost this like you must have invested X amount of time yeah there's a like gate you yeah. must be this high <laughs> yeah. to ride this ride in order to actually fully start to appreciate it like almost all the FPSs nowadays require that you. Like you've just bought their game. Like, yeah. you bought the game, now you have to put 50 hours into that game in order to unlock all these weapons and stuff that are really cool and that will make you enjoy the game way more. <coughs> but you got to do funny, it. It's funny, actually. I was saying this with my dad last night. Mm. Uh, we were talking about the game Banished, yeah. which is a game that he really enjoys. Yeah. Uh, do you want to load up the next game? Oh, yeah, sure. That's um, while, you, while you just talk yeah, about Yeah, so uh, one of the things he was talking about, because like, the, the other game experience Ooh. that my dad and I have together He's is... Cool. That's <laughs> nice. I got a card. card. I got a card. <laughs> is um anyway. the Age of Empires games. I mean, right. The early sort of RTS games that we used to play uh, together, um, competitively and cooperatively. <laughs> By the way, yes, yes, this is my library, and yes, it is absolutely fucking ridiculous <laughs> how many games I yeah. actually have. Oh, I'm glad we're looking at yours and not mine. That's <laughs> embarrassing. How many? Three hundred and fifteen. Oh God. At least you know that I've got credentials, right? Sure. Right Your cred's thing. right up there. Oh, man. Uh, but anyway, so... <laughs> makes me angry. One thing he said about Banish was like, oh, I'm really surprised that there isn't a technology tree. Right. And I said, right, there isn't a technology tree, but think of it this way. At the beginning of the game, you have everything. Mm. You don't need to invest X amount of money or time or... I mean, money is time, especially if you're working a full-time job like my dad. Yeah. Um, you don't have to invest all this time into getting to the point where the game becomes fun. Yeah. Again, like Banished, you start off with everything unlocked, mm. and it's just a case of, well, are you able, like, is your civilization able to use this and stay stable? Yeah, I mean, there's probably... Uh, uh, that's a good example, but also, I mean, with that kind of game, generally speaking, there is kind of a path that you go in sure. order to kind of maximise your results. But, yeah, I mean, there, there just seems to be very much this uh, feeling of... I don't know, in, in order, like, developers have, in order to make multiplayer seem more uh, deep, they've always, they've added all these, um, like, single-player-esque uh, notions to it. Like, before Call of Duty and before the unlocker, the huge amount of unlocks that you can get for that, like, before that came in and really, like, standardised unlocks and that kind of stuff, in multiplayer, you used to just go a class, and that class used to have everything that you wanted to use for that class, like a medic or, or whatever. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it seems like seems like the RPGification of a lot of games is is kind of I don't know not necessarily raising the barrier to entry although it probably does that as well but it just means that you can't really play it like you would not be able to play those games local multiplayer unless you could have a <laughs> yeah, that, wasn't, that wasn't smart <laughs> um, unless you were have <laughs> you were able to have some way of uh, of making sure that you could unlock everything. <laughs> oh, you're really doing a good job on this. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, uh, abandoning that conversation for a little yeah. bit. Um, so this game is called... Nidhogg! Nidhogg. Or it's... Throw Your Sword! <laughs> throw Your Sword Simulator, if you're Tim. Um, oh, what happened? Oh. Um, so basically it's, a, it's supposed to be like a fencing simulator. Uh, and as is... someone who fences, yeah. <laughs> I call bullshit on that. <laughs> It's kind of, it's... <laughs> for example, that doesn't happen in Fantasy. <laughs> uh, it's a very, it's been around for quite some time. It was first shown off like at least, oh god, two or three years ago at, at various, god damn you, various <laughs> gaming conventions. Um... <laughs> oh, I'll rip out your throat. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, oh no! Uh... <laughs> Never going to catch me! <laughs> So the one thing I would say that this does have, oh, no. uh, which is similar to fencing, <laughs> is the concept of right of way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the concept of right of way in fencing. Oh god, it's just. Is um. Oh, I need a sword. <laughs> is like so. For example, just then I could go left, if even you though to. you were on the other side of me, on your side, you could even say, um, because. <laughs> <laughs> Because I had right of way, and in, in fencing, there's a big thing about right of way, like you can only score if it's... How? How did that just happen? Because <laughs> I'm amazing! <laughs> oh god, why are you so much better at this game? <laughs> I don't know! <laughs> like, it actually scares me! Like, this isn't how it's meant to happen. <laughs> um, yeah, so it is obviously a two-player kind of... Uh... You can play a multiplayer online, and I guess, uh, what? <laughs> yeah, you can keep me on the end of your side. You can play an online multiplayer, uh, it is pretty fun that way as well. Um, but, obviously... The lag is a serious thing, though. The best, uh, the best way to experience... Yeah, the lag is really bad, uh, for us, uh, Aussies. Um, I've heard that it's pretty bad for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, um, it, it's it's pretty bad. I think though that they did um, fix that somehow. Oh, God damn. <laughs> hey Phil, <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they they did fix that. I think a little bit. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I can't get past that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, be warned. How? Uh, no. Oh, it's your your right away. My right away. Um, be warned that online multiplayer can. Be <laughs> Be a little bit. Ah, oh, come on! This is absolutely ludicrous. No! You freaked out my heart! Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Such a little chew. So, what? <laughs> I don't know if we can say that. Okay, yeah, we'll bleep that one out. Um, oh! Yeah, eat that. Uh, yeah, so your, your, your local multiplayer. Is probably the best way to experience it, as you can probably see. Um, it's it's very fun. Uh, I quite like it, but it, and the thing is, it's kind of been a darling of, of indie uh, indie conventions for quite some time, and it was it was a long time coming in terms of release. Um, so you know, people have been building up expectations and building up expectations for the God damn it, um, for this game for quite some time. Mainly because it is so stylish. Uh, the, the graphics, although really, really simple. Oh, God, you're going to Oh, damn it. <sighs> oh, hey, that's actually... Oh, uh, retarded. Um, <coughs> yeah, so the graphics are really simple, but... And really kind of psychedelic, as you can see. <laughs> you get eaten by a giant worm, which by I By the Nidhogg. By the Nidhogg, yeah. Um, but for some reason, it, it just really seems quite... Despite the like basic palette and the psychedelic nature of it, it just it's really smooth. Like the sixty kind of frames per second thing really works mm, for it. It really does. 
the thing I might also say is like, I am not in I love this level with the grass. Oh, it's just yeah. so nicely done. Where am I, Phil? You don't know. I'm here. <laughs> I'm powerless. I'm powerless <laughs> against your skill. Um, I, I don't know. I kind of lost love. <laughs> oh, that's right. You can't throw in this. Not in this one. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of lost, feel out of love with it a little bit. Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh my god. I was green already. Ugh. No. <laughs> no. Um, it's, it's, I think it works best and I've heard that it's worked best uh, with people that have arcade cabinets. That would be really good. So they have That'd the arcade sticks and can actually stand there and be next to someone and punch them. And like hurt them <laughs> for, for like yeah to, to kind of uh, you know do that kind of thing yeah um, yeah it, it just kind of yeah it kind of works <laughs> <laughs> oh did I actually catch that with my foot yes, you... <laughs> <laughs> spawn with my face and your sword oh, yes yeah. I don't know it's the kind of game I can see I mean so we also made a small drinking game based oh yeah yeah oh we yes. did yeah. Um, no. Uh, which is kind of like, basically, drink whatever you do something stupid. Which would probably mean that you finish this game very, very, very quickly. Very quickly, and very, very drunk. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh no! <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, the levels are pretty simple. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um, the levels are pretty simple, but they do encourage kind of different modes of play. So you saw before... Uh, you saw before the grass that you couldn't see uh, your player uh, coming through. The the travelator. The travelator that kind of forces you to run slower um, oh. in order to um, to get past. <laughs> and you have to constantly be hitting the right the right stick uh, in order to. <laughs> <laughs> You're drinking your beer. <laughs> I was um, being obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the yeah. guy's gonna stand here. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it is. It is. I think it's kind of fun. Like, I do think that if you had that setup, that setup of a couch with people over, again, it's it's really the feeling of just having a having a good time, like standing around playing this game, swapping in and out so the players don't get so. <laughs> oh, you're it's on the cloud, cloud level. level. Um, so the players don't get so. Uh, I don't know. Um, fatigued about it, I yeah. guess, or losing or whatever. That's the other thing. I think Super Smash Brothers fatigued me really quickly. Yeah, right. Like, really quickly. <laughs> what just happened? I um, uh, did a cartwheel and picked up the sword. Oh, of course. Yeah. That's, that's possible. Are we doing fencing all the time? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't ask me to prove that. <laughs> um, Eat that. <laughs> yeah. Later, Tata. <laughs> cloud level obviously has clouds. Um, so that's good. Um, why do I lower my guard? Every time you throw the sword at me, I'm like, I need to lower it. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, uh, obviously there's different ways that you can guard, so it's up, down, which could probably explain the actual basic gameplay. Well, so you've got, a, you've got an upper, a middle, and a lower, god damn it, guard. Um, and you kind of counter based on that. So if someone's in up, so let's, let's actually show people how to play. So if someone's up, you kind of just bounce off each other. Uh, if someone's middle, bounce off each other, and lower. lower. It, the way that it works to disarm your opponent is if you get within that kind of overlap and change stances, it'll disarm them. So it makes it really fast paced. Um, if you, uh, so what is it? If you hold up, you'll throw your sword. One, two, three. <laughs> yeah, there we go. If you throw them at the same time, obviously they bounce up. Uh, you can do a roll. Oh, you can duck. You can do a roll, there we go. Um, if you do a roll, if you're running and you press down, you'll do a roll, but if they have their sword in a lower, they'll actually, um, they'll hit you. If someone jumps at you and you have either middle or higher, they'll die. They'll just get sort of impaled on your sword. Um, and if you don't have a sword, I'm just, I'm oh, sorry. I just throw that away and you throw yours away. Uh, and we kind of... You can do kind of. I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> also, you can keep them bleeding for ages. So Which you is can great. move. You can move up and down and like kind of. <laughs> and there's your achievement. Yeah. There's your achievement unlocked. Um, <laughs> it takes forever for people to die. Um, obviously, the the blood splatter is pretty cool. Uh, that kind also, of the soundtrack it. is very different. Like, it's very I, different. I yeah. quite like it. 
It's very not dissonant. After a long, like, <coughs> a long period of time, it starts to grate on you. A little bit, yeah, yeah. Even something like, I mean, although I, I don't know. I mean, sometimes you do like that differentness because a lot of these games would just have a, a regular old, um, you know, techno beat sound. <laughs> I'm not like that. Mortal Kombat! Mortal Kombat! Yeah. Um, did I just kick you into the next level? You did. I, did. I don't know. We're just button mashing at this yeah. point. Yeah, <laughs> at this point it becomes a game of button mashing. Ooh. Oh! Oh, they ripped up my throat again. Snap. I think the swords disappear between levels. Yes. No. Uh, oh. <laughs> See, I, I should have just left you. I should have just gone because I had right away. Yeah. Oh, pin me. Um, yeah, so again, it's a it's another nice little game uh, that you can pick up and play, and if you're at a party... Oh, neither of us have a lot of weapons. So yeah. So we have to kill each other. Something has to happen. <laughs> God, you look bad. <sighs> Ting! <laughs> <laughs> Low guard forever. See ya. <laughs> 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 Never gonna catch me! Oh, that's so good. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's, it's a nice little game. Uh, <laughs> what? You might actually win a game here, Phil. Hey, I won the last one. No, you didn't. I did. Oh, God. No! <laughs> that's sad. Um, <laughs> Didn't have to do it, but I wanted to. <laughs> oh, god damn it. God, why was I fighting you? I don't I know. I had right of way. And now we both have to. Oh. Whoop. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the best thing about local co-op, is that you get these moments. <laughs> Alright, so we should move on to the final game, because we are kind of rambling. Uh, it's, a, it's a rambly episode. Um, maybe... So it also has uh, a tournament mode as well, where you can verse against progressively faster and faster uh, CPU opponents. I don't find the tournament mode that difficult. Um, no, it wasn't that. It's wasn't not. That I don't know. Like so for me, one of the reasons why I wasn't a huge fan of uh, the Nidhog is that I am a huge fan of the Nidhog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm not a huge fan of Nidhog. Yeah. Uh, because it's the kind of game where it does very quickly um, just get very old. Yeah. You want to be thief's fine. Cool. Um, yeah, it, it's very old very quickly. Um, I don't know, I can't play it for much more than a couple of minutes at a time. And even then, like, I don't think I have had uh, the desire to come back into Nidhogg after having sort of, you know, pseudo-completed it. Yeah. It's it's very much one of those games that I, I think would suit really only a party setting. Or a LAN, like a large LAN-like setting. But there's, yeah, the other thing was, like, I was having a conversation with someone about Nidhogg the other day. Uh, not that we're playing Nidhogg anymore. Yeah. But, um... And I, I guess I was complaining a bit much about it. Like, I fully admit that I'm a bit of a negative Nancy sometimes when it comes to these things. But I'm not just being negative. I'm just being super, super critical, which I'm, is not necessarily any better. <laughs> if I was being negative, like, so the thing that someone said was, well, you know, why do you even bother playing these games if all yeah. you do is hate them all the time, forever? But they've got really interesting gameplay aspects. Well, the fact that it existed at all, and the fact that I've got even five minutes out of it, um, that's enough for me. Like... You know, I didn't pay a lot for the game. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not going to, you know, come back to it every Christmas or whatever. Like, but so something existing is enough for some people. Like, <laughs> for the... I can't remember the guy that, that created the game, unfortunately. Um, unless you know off the top of your head. No, not off the top of my head, I'm afraid. <clears throat> but, um, you know, should, should he have not made the game because I didn't enjoy it for more than t you know, 10 minutes? No, absolutely not. Like, all art... Why would you leave that there? All art is is art. Like, it's there for art's sake, right? Like, and the video games is art, you know, conversation. We've had this for a, a huge amount of... of um, oh, how did you even know that? Oh, cool. <clears throat> um, we've had this huh. conversation before about, you know, what constitutes art and Jesus. all the rest of it. But, um, 
a game just existing for the sake of existing is perfectly mm. enough in my mind. Well, I mean, and also it's the it's the kind of game which can work like that. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Maybe we skipped ahead a little much. I think we might have. Yeah, I'm dead. Is that it? No, just dead? No, no. But that is me dead again. <laughs> and I don't think I have too many lives left. Uh, so this game, on the other hand, yeah. is... Keep it away from me. I'm trying. <clears throat> is Hammer Watch. Hammer 4? Hammer Watch. Hammer Watch. Hammer Time. <laughs> Stop. Um, Hammer Fell. Uh, and yeah, it is a game. It's a, So it's a, a pretty much just like a dungeon crawler. Um, with very, again, very simple controls. Um, you play as either a ranger... Oh, hey. <laughs> Whoa. Um, you play as either a ranger, thief, uh, mage, or a war Sorry. <laughs> warlock. Um, again, not that much to it, really. Um, fun. Yeah. Um, there's kind of, like, uh, a lot of stuff to do in terms of, like exploring that kind of stuff the secret areas there's uh, you know is it not procedurally generated I might be no I think it's not I don't think it is I don't think it is um oh, oh it decreases the penalty I see yeah it decreases the penalty nah don't need that we're hardcore um I think it is very much a, a roguelike-esque uh, oh I do have a ranged attack because <laughs> oh that uses your mana up oh does it yeah does too. Does that recharge? Um, <laughs> yes, it does slowly. Uh, pretty much, you're just exploring dungeons, getting slowly Fat more, loots. getting the loots, getting slowly more um, powerful as you go as you level up. Um, I like it because it's very simple and very. I don't. Know, I like the art style. I like the way that they've put the game together. Um, I just think it's. Hey, look at that. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, fat loots. That's the stuff. Um, yeah, I kind of like the way that they put it together. I think, I think, uh, in terms of art style, in terms of just the combat, is really simple but effective. Uh, and again, it's one of those games that you know, sit around and play or play online. I think you can do online multiplayer. Uh, this is way more cooperative uh, in terms of local co-op uh, than the other two games, probably. Um, <laughs> probably, probably, <laughs> mainly because. <laughs> you are kind of um, relying on each other a bit more uh, in order to defend and that kind of stuff uh, and support each other and basically finish exploring. Um, I'm not sure what the mechanic is. Maybe we'll have to die in order to see exactly what the mechanic is for what happens when you die, whether or not it is a true rogue. Maybe we'll just do that now. What happens? Game over. That's it. Stats. Yeah. Oh, it's got quite a bit of stats. That's kind of cool. So if you quit... Yeah, seriously, it's just, bam, cop that, you're over. Uh, yeah, very, I don't know, it's very simple, very easy. Um, it's got a bunch of, oh, hero defense. Hey, let's do that. Oh, hells yeah. Oh, man, so if we're going to talk about local co-op, I mean, we've missed a big thing, and that's um, the Warcraft 3 mods, oh, custom God. maps. God, yeah. I mean... We spent so much time playing. Uh, do you, you want to buy something? Right. That... Let's do that. Fire sure. shooters. Oh, this could be fun. Does that hurt us? No. Uh, this could be good. I, actually, this might be better than the <laughs> campaign. <laughs> um, so, Hero Defense was something that sort of came out with the uh, you know the advent of. Um, the Jesus, goodness me! The War Warcraft Three mod sort of scene, I guess you could call it. Like it was, Hero Defense was one of those sort of mods that existed at the time. Yeah. Um, think, and of, has think of your since, notice, like yeah, I mean, it's since become a thing. Like it's literally a thing now. Mm. Um. All, all of those land games that we used to play, I, I, I mean, <laughs> Blizzard was responsible for quite a few of them. Uh, there's, you know, StarCraft, Diablo, uh, Dota. Played a heap of Dota back when it wasn't an eSport. Um, back when you didn't have to be good at it. Back when you picked the hero that you thought looked the coolest. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, it, it, it still retains that a little bit. I think Dota would still be a really fun game to play 
just pick up and play and you know by doing the thing with just picking the thing that you like that looks the coolest or whatever yeah uh, but it just it seems oh, to oh no oh god what are you doing there's bats they got through what the bats got through where they're already gone they're gone what do you mean got through they went through the little thingy and then came down that way oh oh right yeah right, we're bad at this game yeah not the greatest <laughs> oh, come back down here back down here really oh I don't know, local co-op, it just seems to be something that's really... Sorely missing. Missing, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that... Not that that genuinely helps us since, you know, Sydney versus Perth <laughs> thing anyway. Not really, but I, I think I think the thing that could really regenerate it, for me at least, is the fact that um, Steam in-home streaming is coming about. That's true. Um, but again, you have a TV. See, I haven't owned a TV in... Mm, Roughly a bajillion years. <laughs> um, so Steam Home Streaming, if anyone uh, doesn't know about it, is basically you can... So we've got this PC set up and we're playing in my study. But if I wanted to Steam in home stream, I would start this game on my PC. And then if I go to my laptop in my main room, my, start, my, my sort of lounge room, I guess, um, what happens is that the... Uh, picture from my PC, my more powerful PC that can actually handle all the games that we're playing, um, is streamed to the TV in my lounge room. Uh, and what that means is that the... Uh, oh god, it's really hard to aim in this game. Um, what that means is that you're actually able to uh, play games in your lounge room, like, really easily and really effectively. Um, oh, hey. There we go. Probably should have bought some of these. <laughs> Um, ten percent chance. Flurry. Let's do that. I don't know what that is. Do I get money? Oh, or yeah, is that yeah. just something that you are? That's pretty cool. No, you got money. Oh um, wow! I have three thousand five hundred bajillion. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Steam in home streaming, what it does is it basically allows you to to recapture that um, lounge room feeling with a PC because. Obviously, consoles are really, really easy to sit around and play co-op games on. Like, they are the, the place where you would do it. You'd go to Xbox Live Arcade or something like that, or PSN Network. Uh, PS, PSN Network? PS, yep. PS Network. Whatever it is. PSN. Um, and you would, uh, yeah, you'd be able to load up stuff there. Oh, no. Oh, no, they go all the way around. Oh, that's they cool. do now. I just bought that. Oh, right. You buy ways of doing things. That's good. Um, yeah, so nowadays, because a lot of people are um, mainly doing their gaming on PC, it makes sense that they're trying to recapture this market, and it's kind of a shrewd move on the way of, uh, on the way of Valve in order to try and do this. Because, like, I, I spent maybe five minutes setting it up, and it worked really, really well. Um, easily streamed uh the only thing that was really holding it back was uh my home internet um setup so i kind of have a crappy router i guess um and that kind of hurt it a little bit so the, the refresh rate wasn't brilliant um but other than that it was really really easy uh and i think they're kind of onto a good thing when it comes to this uh comes to this kind of stuff um if you want to set that up, it's actually just a single button in Steam. Uh, literally just download it on your laptop that you want to stream to. I think we're going to lose here. Yeah, failure we lose. Uh, download it onto your laptop. Uh, just go to the... You just have to log in on the laptop that you're going to use. Uh, if you then go in there and basically double click on any game that's, that's come up, uh, and it'll start streaming. It's it's really that easy. And if you've set it up correctly, then it's going to be lag free, really easy to set up, and you can sit back with a couple of controllers, have a bit more room because most people's studies, like my study, is not that big. Um, it's a little bit harder to set up in in it. Uh, we spent a good five ten minutes setting up all the equipment that we're going to use today. Just this um, to you know get all that kind of stuff sorted up. Um, yeah, so it, it, I don't know. I I kind of like the idea of being able to buy stuff on PC which has come from PS4 or, or Xbox One, and be able to... Because, uh, you know, Towerfall... I, I kind of prefer did. to 
buy it for PC when it's come from PC. Well, but that, that's just but, me. But you know that that's going to happen. Like people are going to develop yeah. for all platforms, and that's the way it's going to work. Um, I, you know, Towerfall's been out in the PlayStation Network for I don't know how many years, like at least a year, I think. Yeah, a year or so. Um, and it's an awesome game. And why couldn't it have come to PC earlier? I don't know. But Who knows? Probably could have. It's just if they see that, and... yeah. But if they see that the market is there and that the ability is there for players to stream to their lounge rooms and enjoy these games, then it's maybe the renaissance of maybe. Of I'd like to see it. Local, I, local uh, yeah, co-op play. I mean, and the other thing is like a lot of the local cop play in older games that we sort of look fondly back with our nostalgia glasses mm. on. A lot of them weren't the main part of the game. A lot of them were like an extra little sort of fun thing tacked on to a game. Mm. I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of room for games to be able to uh, use that same model, but with more current generation games, I guess. Right. Um, the flip side of that argument is that people don't necessarily want to have all the time and resources spent on making an awesome sub game when they yeah. could be spending that time and, and money on making the game proper. Yeah. We already have so many issues with really subpar games coming out because, you know, an tacked on multiplayer component was just thrown in there when it really didn't need to be. But I guess then the question is just, you know, are you picking the right game for the right market? Sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Like I wouldn't expect a NAF tower fall defense uh, you know, tower defense thing to be tacked onto the end of The Last of Us. Like that no, doesn't no, make of any not, yeah. sense at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you wanted to make a separate game set in The Last of Us world that has a tower defense aspect to it, by all means, go ahead. And that's, but that's why I think a lot of the time the the local multiplayer, the local co op, and the local multiplayer games are the indie ones. Yeah, because, because they, they have the time to spend on what they want. Yeah, exactly, and what they remember and what we're all nostalgic for probably is the fact that this kind of games really used to be awesome like you'd, you'd have the ability to get four or five people in the same room and yeah. just go completely nuts over a game like this so. see whereas look at some for example now you've got things like uh the call of duty franchise for example yeah <clears throat> i think the call of duty franchise now would benefit from not having a single player anymore <laughs> i mean if they spent more time you know honing in on the um the multiplayer aspect, which is already, and let's face it, the multiplayer aspect of, of Call of Duty is about as polished as it's going to get. Yeah. Like, it is It is a very well-oiled machine. Um, that's an awesome move. <laughs> <laughs> Quite like that. Too. But, you know, now, rather than spending money on the single-player side of things, mm. why not spend it on different multiplayer modes? I mean, already the zombie mode is a thing. Yeah. That's a thing that exists now. Yeah, yeah. Games have zombie modes. Yeah. So... You know, Call of Duty is something I could imagine a tower defense style thing. I yeah. mean, I could imagine more arcadey things coming into. Well, there were games back in the day, or not back in the day, not even back in the day, like not too long ago, like Time Splitters. Had yeah, exactly. A, had a decent single player campaign, but then they really pushed a lot of different multiplayer in there. Like it was all like completely crazy stuff. Like you would you would run around and there'd be all these mutators. Like mutators aren't really a thing that happens anymore. No. Um, yeah, I don't know. They're, they're, I think there's a gap in the, in the market for, for a... Uh, I mean, Titanfall kind of tried to do it. Like, they had multiplayer only, but they didn't push it hard enough. They really only did what... The only game modes that we played were Attrition, which is... Amazing. Really good, but only one game mode. Then there's Deathmatch. Capture the Flag sucked, because some of the options that they put in there, like carrying the flag in your Titan, which is such a terrible, terrible idea. Um... Yeah, no one really played those. They really only played Attrition or Deathmatch. Yeah, you've really got to pick the modes that match the game style and the gameplay that you're making. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's, yeah, it's about making those sensible decisions. Titanfall, I think, is the kind of game where, because you've got the whole Titan aspect of things, you yeah. could have some really interesting sort of takes on yeah, yeah. games. Like, you capture the flag, for example, rather than just being a flag that you pick up and take from one end to the other, which is an abstract concept at the best of times. Yeah. <laughs> why not make it something a little bit more sensible? Like, let's say there is some sort of power generator that you, yeah, your yeah. team needs, but it's big. It's a big, heavy power generator. Yeah. A person can't lift it up, but a Titan might be able to pick it up. Yeah, exactly. And then, so if you've got, you know, calling your Titan, you drop down, you fight the enemy, and you get to pick up the power generator, but while you picked it up, you, can, you can't fight 
because you're holding a giant mm. power generator. So your team then has to defend your titans that slowly plods its way back to, and maybe you can't dash while you're holding it or something. Like, <coughs> these are simple ideas to make mm. fresh takes on interesting game modes that already exist that that play to the strengths of the game that you're making mm. in the first place. And if we're talking about local multiplayer, not just multiplayer, which we've kind of abstracted out to, but if you're talking about local multiplayer, how about a, a mode where one person controls... Like, it's just a 1v1 titan-smashing competition where one person controls the torso and one person controls oh, the Oh, absolutely. Legs. That'd be hilarious. Um, in fact, they used to do that with MechWarrior. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There used to be a, a mode in MechWarrior where you could have different people controlling different... You know, portions of, of the the mech, which I thought was a really. You know, I remember playing that. It had some hilarious sort of combinations where you had one person with the guns, one person with the. I don't know. Shields. I, I, and... I guess we're kind of in a in a post internet and a post uh, I guess fast internet, like fast, post broadband world. You're probably never gonna get that back. Like you're probably never gonna get to the same extent as it used to be. Uh, you know, when we were growing up, where you, you know, you would, I would, I would spend hours, hours and hours at friends' places uh, playing games, mm. uh, local multiplayer, and having a blast. Like nowadays, the same kind of thing is maybe joining a mumble server. Yeah. Up on a mumble server. Well, that's the other thing is that I mean, team speak is becoming a big thing. Yeah. In games now, like it's in almost all of the new games that are out, they are almost reliant on it, if not just having the option there. Um, although, I mean, see, the first thing I did with Titanfall, I went in and turned off the microphone to every person that wasn't me, <laughs> because I just, I don't want to listen, I don't want to hear what any 16-year-old has to say, ever, really. <laughs> But then we look at a game like Guns of Icarus. Them too. I don't care. <laughs> I was never 16. I was born this way, fully bearded. And <laughs> my mother was horrified. She still is. Um, the yeah, like the Guns of Icarus games um, rely on voice communication. If you don't have a microphone, you're not playing the game as it's meant to be, sort yeah. of thing. Um, another game would be, for example, uh, Rust. Like, if you're not yeah, playing yeah. Rust with a microphone, you're not playing Rust. Yeah. Um, Same as you... DayZ. Yeah, and DayZ and, like, all these other games that rely on... See, that's, but that's the thing. I see that genre that's really starting to emerge now. Like, I see that genre as kind of the new local multiplayer. Kind of, yeah. Because people mess around in that like crazy. Like, some people take it really seriously, but some people, like, just like to... <laughs> yeah. Some people just like to screw around and, and have fun and troll people. And, you know, that's kind of the mode of play that most closely resembles what I remember from my, you know, sitting around playing games with people locally, is that you would basically be trolling, but locally. <laughs> you know, you'd be trolling each other, you'd be punching each other in the, sh you know, in the shoulders. You'd I think we play like... different games as kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be like Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, like... Uh, yeah, there was a lot of trash talk, a lot, a lot of, trash of monkeying talk. around. And so that kind of translates pretty much one-to-one -to, -one to all these games that are coming out now, which are very very like i don't know trolley like but you're just doing it with either a smaller group of friends or like oh actually i should say probably a larger group of friends that you know online because nowadays you know, yeah friends list can be upwards of 200 300 people sometimes. yeah exactly so not me but people who <laughs> people who make friends people who aren't afraid of every other person yeah yeah exactly um yeah you know it can be quite a quite a similar experience i think um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think the spirit of the thing isn't gone, but the actual way of doing it, like actually sitting down in the same room. Yeah, maybe the implementation's changed, but the yeah. concept still exists. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Either I way, I'd like more games like it. So developers, oh, yeah. please, could you make more games? Well, I think, I think it's going to be down to the indie developers. Like, I really do think that... Yes, the developers. Oh, no, I know. I'm I wouldn't saying, discount them. <laughs> no, absolutely not. God, we love you guys. Um, it's just, I can't see that there's a massive market for just regular, like, AAA games to try and capture that anymore. Um, anyway, that should probably wrap it up for uh, for us for today. That's probably our friend who wants to come over and... Uh, play, play card games! Play card games. Uh, so, uh, I guess... 
Sorry, apologies a little bit because uh, we did, uh, well, not a little bit, a lot. Uh, apologies for it being a little bit rambly uh, today because we were trying to talk and play games at the same time. Turns out, quite difficult. Harder than we thought. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it was really the only way that we could get you an episode this week. Uh, we will announce the giveaway, uh, we'll announce the prize giveaway of Transistor uh, in the post, in the announcement post uh, for this uh, video. I won't announce it in the actual podcast because we haven't drawn it yet. Um, <laughs> we were supposed to do that today. Where is your mouse? It's somewhere, I don't know. Anyway, as usual, you can find us on timandphil.com. Uh, if you are on Facebook, you can also find us at facebook.com slash timandphil. Uh, what are you doing? Just keep talking. That's cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> if, you, uh, if you wanted to contact Tim uh, more directly, you can go to his Twitter, which is twitter.com slash... Uh, well, not twitter.com. No, at, it's just at... It's just at Ajeotis, A-G-E-O-T-A-S. No, it's not. What? No, it's not. A G. It's Dungeon Master. Oh, crap. Sorry, it's Dungeon Master. It's at Dungeon Master. Um, his... Oh, God, his, his Steam handle. <laughs> That's the thing. It's his Steam handle is uh, steamcommunity.com uh, slash id slash ajatus, which is actually A-G-E-O-T-A-S. -E yes, got that one right. Uh, or his personal website, which is corsairsanchorage.com. And as always, you can find Phil on Twitter at Tooth Soup, which is just yes. tooth and soup put together, yep. which is probably not as appetizing as it sounds. You can also find him on Steam yes. with Steam <laughs> uh, blah, 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 ID forward slash Flaxair, which is F-L-A-X-E-H. Yep. And you can find him on the other thing that we talk about his personal website That's the one. <laughs> trying to do many things at once it's which is www.toothsoup.com <laughs> all right and this uh, episode we do have a couple of shout outs for people that have left us nice comments and have liked us on our facebook page and that kind of thing uh while tim finds the facebook uh, page i will find the customer reviews that are on itunes uh first we have to say thanks to how many a's is that that's got to be Andy. Yeah, about that. Andy, thank you very much for your review. Uh, he says, great Australian podcast with in-depth reviews, usually two per episode, frequently lead, Tim hasn't scrolled across, uh, discussions about games and gaming in general, well-paced, uh, well-informed and often funny. Uh, yeah, don't know about that last point, but thank you very much, Andy. Uh, the other one was by Scorched84. Uh, he says, or he shit. No, no, I know who that is. He says, uh, an informative introduction with a wide range of games spanning many genres. Bloody, bloody, blah. Uh, he loves us, basically, is what he's saying. Uh, two five star reviews. That's our two first two first two five star reviews, which is quite nice. Which is very um, nice. Really, really nice. Um, uh, I can't find them, but we actually did have two new people on the Facebook. Three. Uh, three. In three fact. new people. Um, but it's not showing up on Facebook because I am some kind of internet spastic, apparently. <laughs> um, and 14 more. And it doesn't, 14. Yeah, it doesn't really tell you. Uh... It only shows you the ones that you're friends with. Oh, that's annoying. Mm. We'll fix that. We'll do all of it uh, in the next episode. But there were three people, and uh, I have actually spoken to one of you um, because you hit me up on chat afterwards, and oh, that was good. really nice, and yeah. you enjoyed the podcast, and we appreciate that you took the time and effort to reach out to us like that. So thank you very much. Cool. All right. Well, uh, that will probably do it because Facebook has now just stopped loading. Completely shut it down. Stop loading entirely. <laughs> Where uh, do you go, Facebook? Thank you. This is why I don't use it. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, anyway, thank you very much for uh, listening slash watching. Uh, <laughs> we'll be back to our regular, slightly more polished podcast uh, next week. Uh, but until then, uh, thanks for listening. And happy gaming. Yeah.